there's something in psychology called the arrival fallacy. And it's the illusion that once we make it, once we attain our goal or reach our destination, then we will have lasting happiness. Then of course we reach our goal, we reach our destination, and we find that lasting happiness has somehow eluded us. This is something I see quite a bit with retirement. You think that as soon as you have a big enough sum of money, then you'll automatically experience that freedom and that happiness that you've been searching for. Fortunately, that's really actually the case. And to help us understand why we have guest Sin Meyer on the show, Sin is a retirement life coach and the founder of Second Wind Movement. Sin, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I am too. I didn't tell you this actually before, before hitting record, but this is actually going to be the 200th episode of Ready Ooh. for Retirement. So a, a milestone, I guess you want to call it that. And sometimes on those milestone episodes, you want to talk about something extra special or extra important <laughs> outside the usual social security, Medicare investments, taxes. And I think that this is one of those milestone topics of who cares how big your portfolio is? Who cares how much you saved in taxes? Who cares if you had the perfect estate plan? If you're lacking purpose and meaning and happiness in retirement, we're kind of missing the whole point of it. So I'm excited to dive into that and talk to you about that. Yay. Look at you. 200. That's awesome. <laughs> 200. Let's hope it's yeah. a good one. I think it will be. I know we've had a conversation <laughs> before and it was really beneficial. And here, here's where I want to start is I'll talk to clients in my role as a financial advisor and they've saved enough money. They've got the plan in place. They have the strategy in place and it's time to retire. But the feedback or the concern is what am I going to do? You know, it's, I, I retire on a Friday, James, what do I do the following Monday morning? And there's really the sense, really what they're saying is they're alluding to the lack of identity or the underlying current is who am I when I don't have 40 to 50 hours of work each week to distract me. And so I would love to know from you, Sin, what is the best thing that someone can do where they go from this really busy schedule, they've got deadlines, they've got meetings, they've got projects, they're working 40, 50 hours, and then they retire. Yeah. How do they think about that transition? Exactly. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because there's so many layers to this, right? So there's the brain layer, there's the societal layer, and then there's the tangible versus intangible layer. So I want to address the tangible versus intangible. So tangibly, okay, we're preparing this great career, financial nest egg. Here's the numbers. Am I financially prepared, right? And so stereotypically, it's financial retirement pre preparation equals retirement preparation. Mm -hmm. But there's the total invisible stuff, the mental, emotional role, your identity, all these passions and purpose and where you fit into this world and what you've been associating with is totally open when you enter retirement. So the brain thing is we pick condition to identify with a certain role, identity, purpose throughout your peak career and your family life, right? And then when you come and cross that finish line, it's like, okay, whoa, actually it's not as great as I thought it was. And so from a mental stage perspective, there's the pre-retirement stage where it's kind of like esoteric in the future. As long as I'm financially prepared, I'm good. And then you have that honeymoon stage, which is stage two. And you're like, yes, relief, avoiding the stress of work. And then that disenchantment stage. And that is where we're kind of talking about today, where it's that structure is the brain level. So you've been activating your system physically, mentally, like every day to have this really crazy schedule, at least those who are go, 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 which is most Americans. And then you're open in this totally new phase. So you have the identity thing that you're dealing with. You have the spending money down, which feels very awkward. And then you have this open structure. So to begin with, I would say before you find clarity on your purpose and your passion, which is, you know, my line of work and my wheelhouse, it's like, you can just start at, with the basics of structuring your day. So mm -hmm. I really like to advise people to not get into a very easy stage three disenchantment retirement, right? Where you mentally tell yourself, okay, I have all the time in the world to take care of the things on my bucket list, my to-do list, you know, all these passions and purposeful things that I thought I would do in retirement. Because what happens is your brain kind of kicks into, I need to be in safe mode and just reserve my energy. And so without a structure, it's easy to procrastinate. So what does that structure I like to, look like? I like to advise breaking it into four chunks. So you have your morning and your evening routines. And those are cyclical ritualistic things that you do. And those are just the bookends of your day. And then you have your mid morning, which is like before lunch and then your afternoon, just four really open chunks. And then within those, 
There's the daily practices. So that could look like exercising, journaling, walking, reflective time. And then you have energizing me time. So that's, again, my wheelhouse, passions, purpose, how you're going to contribute, how you're going to help others, right? And that's not going to look stereotypical, like volunteering at um, gigs that are classic or senior activities, right? So it's very much an important aspect to find clarity on this bucket. But then you also have your to-do list items, like your chores, responsibilities, your duties, your doctor's appointments, that type of thing. And then you have your social time. So I like to advise people to just have these general buckets where you know where to toss different activities and where they land so that you leave room for everything. And if you just start with that general structure, then you'll know more clearly where to put your chores versus, you know, the things that you thought you would be doing and enjoying the more fulfilling, gratifying things. Mm -hmm. And you also fit in those ritualistic things, you know, where you're taking care of your body and things like that and your social activities. And what's the risk? Uh, and I know you touched on this a bit, but say someone says, I, I, I'm getting away from work because I hate that structure. I hate that my day is scheduled to the minute and here's what I have to do. And I'd love just to breathe a little bit. What happens if I don't, if I transition to retirement and I don't create that structure? What's the risk there? The risk is absolutely falling into procrastination and staying in disenchantment for longer than you want to, right? Without that clarity. So it sounds backwards, but you need to schedule in that spontaneity. So it's going to feel great. And like, you are going to need that liberation of not having to have every minute scheduled, but you don't want to swing totally to the opposite side where you have zero things scheduled because you're craving it that badly. So begin with a basic structure and definitely schedule in that free time where you can be spontaneous mm -hmm. and just relax and do nothing. Right. And have that stress relief available to you, but you don't want it to be so much that your limbic system takes over and just lets you have that indefinitely all day without structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To me, it almost, and, and correct me where I'm wrong here, Sen, this is obviously your, uh, your wheelhouse, but it's people almost have this sense that the opposite of a crazy, hectic, busy schedule is a schedule totally void of any structure. But to me, it's like, no, no, both are a reflection of the same thing, which is a lack of intentionality. On the right. one hand, it's you're being reactive to someone else's demands and needs in timelines. But it's not as if just by completely removing that, you're now fully being intentional. By mm -hmm. removing that, it's going to feel good probably for a little bit as you just can breathe a little bit. But then, yes. like you're saying, you get lost in that sense of procrastination yes. um, that isn't the best. Well, why? Why is procrastination such a big problem in retirement? I know you're starting to talk about it, but what is it that that ultimately creates? I think the lack of clarity is the biggest thing, right? So your lack of clarity leads to lack of direction, lack of next steps. What do I do? How do I fill my time, right? And so you're like going for the relief and that's great, but without structure, then you kind of lose momentum and lose direction. And then you kind of get into this disenchantment phase of just cloudiness. And I don't know how to get on this path. And you're right in that we're so reactive to things that we're responsible for and like delivering on these, you know, career type of goals. And so when it comes to retirement, clarity is needed on your sense of passion and purpose. Mm -hmm. So there's energy that you invest in your career and your family life for decades. And then when you retire, that energy floats up and it needs to be intentionally directed somewhere that gives you energy, that makes you feel relevant, that is your new identity. And it also is a way for you to develop, evolve, grow into something different. And that's more authentically you. And most people aren't given those tools or even those questions or even you know the suggestion to find clarity on these things that are going to light you up from the inside out. And so we end up not even addressing those concerns. And then this invisible void grows and hums in the background. And it gets bigger and bigger until we're kind of faced with either depression or anxiety, like symptoms. Yep. How do you suggest to people? Cause I all hear people say this all the time is I know I need to find my passion. I know I need to find my next thing, but I just, I don't know what it is. You know, I've had this job description, or I've had this role and that's been refined over years and years and years. And like, that's simple enough. So it's, 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 I'll see this all the time with people that don't love work and they really don't want to work. 
but it's at least the evil they know as opposed to the evil they don't, which is, gosh, I know I need to find this next thing, but where do I even start when it comes to rediscovering who am I as a person? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, especially for people who are like, go, go, go high achieving individuals in their careers, they come up blank when asked, what are my passions and purpose? Like in retirement, what's my role? Uh, because they're so used to externally delivering. And so I can only imagine if someone's not liking their job, where that energy is going to go, because they haven't really had the time to think beyond just like stress relief, right? Just, I need to get away from this. So I have a framework, five rings of retirement and finance is one of them. And finance is, you know, you're very much part of this mission is to support all the other passion filled, fulfilling um, rings of retirement. And so I really encourage people to find clarity using this framework and then going deeper into that to find clarity. So meaning there's growth, which is your sense of change, develop, evolution, stimulation, right? And so you need to have different passions and purpose than you did in the past. And most people assume that what they loved in the past is what they're going to love in the future. And that's not typically the case because you're body and your mind and your brain, your brain is neuroplastic. And so that means you can create new neural pathways in your brain for the rest of your life. And so it craves evolution and change to be different, right? So sometimes that void that hums in the background is just like, you're ready for change. You're ready for growth. So growth community. So that's your relationships and your involvement in the community and, you know, your relationship with your spouse, et cetera, and your friends and then health. So it's physical and mental. And then giving back, which is your sense of purpose. And that's your contribution. And that is completely not going to be traditional in the sense that it's not going to be a volunteer gig that most people do or suggest as like a stereotype in society. So that's like saying this career that I chose is for everyone. Like it's so different. Everyone's career that they chose, you know, even their educational paths are so unique. And so giving back is going to be completely non-traditional. And that's also an area that people like a big one for people where it's, they find their sense of purpose and sharing their unique gifts. And it's going to look totally different from what's stereotypically out there as volunteering. So going deep into those rings uh, is how I encourage people to find clarity and not all at once. So my whole thing is micro steps and consistency. So breaking it down into energy level out of the five rings, which ring do you feel the least energy in? So just a simple scale, one to five, five being super great, one being low and depleted on energy, which ring do you need your most attention now? And that's typically where I suggest people go to look first. And so that is at least one category that you know needs your attention right now. And then from there, the micro step thing applies in the finding clarity process, which is an inward process before any external outward action. Mm -hmm. So I would prod your brain every single day. Sounds really silly at first, but it's so important because this clarity is going to help you not waste time and energy on things that aren't a good fit that you don't really care about deep down inside. So zone in on one ring and then prod your brain, whether it's journaling or following like my system where I give you all the questions and prompts um, to find the reticular activating system in your brain, RAS, which is basically it filters in what you truly want to know and see. Mm -hmm. So an example of the RAS is let's say you're shopping for a car and you're considering a red convertible, you're driving around town and you'll notice that you'll start filtering in more red convertibles on the road. Were there more red convertibles on the road? No, but your brain was filtering more of them in. So it's the same thing when you're finding clarity on any of these invisible things your brain filters in and from your subconscious, these deeper desires, wishes, dreams, and goals that you authentically align with that you really didn't give the chance to surface. So mm -hmm. I definitely recommend like the micro stepping thing where you're just spending like 20 minutes a day prodding your brain for these answers. Yeah. I, I think there's so much truth to that. Now what, Let's say, so growth is an example of one of those five rings that you're talking about. So I just retired and I'm saying, hey, I just don't feel like I'm growing. I feel like I've plateaued. I'm stagnant. I don't feel like I'm, I don't know. That's just an area of my life that I feel I'm lacking in. I know I need to prod my brain for 20 minutes a day. What does that look like? I just, I, I feel like I don't even know where to start. What am I doing for 20 minutes a day? Or are there activities that I should be 
trying to be doing to kind of have some of these things float to the surface so I can start to pursue them. What's an example of things, whether it's journal prompts, whether it's activities, whether it's conversations, what are some examples of things that can be done to help find those? So I definitely have a system where I lay out every question prompt exercise that you need to prod your brain in all five categories. And then imagine doing this 60 days in a row, all that clarity will be unlocked. And then you have a roadmap to then take outward action and kind of work through each of them in micro steps as well. For growth specifically, if you don't want to, if you want to do like the DIY um, process, I would just zone in on like things that what growth means to you, you know, like what are your passions? What are your regrets in three words? Like what's your philosophy for living? What core values do you want people to think of when they think of you? What inspires you the most? You know, what's a significant event in your life that helped define you? Like these types of questions, um, I'll, I can leave a link to like a sample of these finding clarity questions. I call them the just general finding clarity questions. They very much apply to your sense of growth because it's, you evolving into a more authentic version of you in this new role. But basically anything that's going to like energize you, right. And pique your interest, right. It's going to be like a surge of energy and it's the best way is to journal physically about it 20 minutes per day, you know, and kind of follow an organic rabbit trail, if you will, um, if you want to take the DIY route. So yeah. I, I'm happy to leave like those questions there, but there's a very systematic methodical way um, in my program, the rewire retirement program yeah. um, that helps you in every ring. Yeah. A, a couple of things I want to add on to that is um, as we're talking about this and you and I, it's we're, we're talking about this retirement transition and how do you continue that growth and evolution? Even once you retire, the re it's not like, oh, that like there's two phases of life of pre-retirement and post-retirement. And, you know, it's once you retire, then you should do this. It just, it just so happens that that first phase of life, the pre-retirement does typically get filled up for you. Like your time is accounted for, whether it's raising a family or paying a mortgage or going to work, like you have so many responsibilities that it's almost like your time to focus on some of these things is diminished a bit. Whereas when you retire, and you think these are going to be my golden years and you think this is going to be the best time ever. Well, now all of a sudden you do have a wide open week. And, and so you, I guess, have some time or some capacity to focus there. But this should be something that's universal, whether you're 65 years old or 30 years old, of how do you constantly evaluate the areas of your life that you feel are lacking? Because the earlier on you do it, you know, if someone's listening to this and they're 10 years out from retirement. Well, this shouldn't be something that you're saying, I'll do this in 10 years. It's almost, hey, as soon as you can do this, the better. It's just going to lead to a more full life, regardless of how old you are. One thing that stuck out to me is, so I'll journal every morning. And what I found is 2023, a lot of that journaling is about the business and what we're doing. And there's major breakthroughs and there's things that are awesome. And I don't know if you follow the Enneagram much, but like there's certain personality types uh -huh. and I mean, mine is very much that achiever, but I want that dopamine hit of doing new things and accomplishing new things. And as the year was coming to a close and it was kind of reflecting on what went well, what do I want to change for 2024? I almost like embarrassed to say this, but it's like so much of my journaling is work related as opposed to family related. And as kind of convicted a little bit of, geez, what if I spent as much time journaling or reflecting on how could I be a better spouse? How could I be a better father? How could I be a better friend? And talking to your five rings is very much the work and the growth aspect that, that was great. And it wasn't like the others were bad, but I wasn't paying enough attention. And then at the same time, James Clear, who's one of my favorite authors, has a great newsletter. And he sent this quote that stuck with me. I have it pulled up. He said, you will love whatever you pour your heart into. Passion follows commitment. And it was this sense of, I was like, well, some of these things, and I'm not talking about like my sp spouse and my daughter, but like some areas like, ah, I just don't feel like I have a passion for growth or I don't have a passion for community involvement or I don't have a passion for work or whatever it might be. But sometimes as he's saying that passion follows your commitment to it. So don't wait for passion to strike and then you commit to growing and then you commit to service and then you commit to things. It's the commitment comes first. And then that passion follows and it becomes this virtuous cycle of you're then growing in these ways that you want to 
grow. So I think that that's just, I, I think your message is so spot on. I just want to tell people this isn't just, you know, day one of retirement. Now you start to implement this as much as wherever you are in your life. This is just a universal thing that people unfortunately don't always realize until retirement. One, I think because of that arrival fallacy, they just think, oh, things will be better when I'm retired and have money and have time and have my life back. But number two, it's just you, you're that distraction of work is no longer something that you can use to escape the question of who am I really and what do I want to do on this earth? Exactly. Exactly. I love that. And passion, you're right. It, it follows. So an example that popped into my brain is like, I play violin. Did it start as my passion? Absolutely not. You sound like a squeaky pig for like three years, especially when you start when you're like in June or 10, I was 10, so elementary school. And so just like that commitment to daily practice as arduous and like tedious as it was, it didn't become my passion until after all that, right? And then I got to play genres that I enjoy listening to and all these other things and jamming with other people. So it's that energy that grows after the commitment is there, but you know that the commitment is there because you have that clarity first though as well. Mm -hmm. So the inward action is very important and it's invisible and it's going to feel tedious because you're committing. Why am I journaling every morning? Like, why, you know, what's the point of this? Because some people might get like an aha moment and then begin the outward action. Um, and that's fine as long as you continue the inward reflection stuff too, because there's so much locked in your subconscious that's jumping at the bit to get out, you know, especially when you're going to be the leader of how you're structuring your day and you're not answering to anyone, you're answering to yourself. And so that's a very scary, different thing for a lot of people who are conditioned to, you know, be in our society and everything. And so you're right. The earlier you start this process, like the better, that would be so amazing if everyone did this. And like journaling is a really effective yet simple exercise to do where you pull things out of your brain and into the, onto the paper and then it activates the RAS. And so you'll have more details filter in over time. Yeah. And then there's the cumulative uh, benefits. And then, so once you have that clarity, then you can take the outward action, which it's not all going to be like easy, right? It's not all mm -hmm. gravy. And so then the passion comes after that. It follows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a quote. I don't know who said it, but something I might get it wrong, but the thoughts are disentangled through speaking lips and pencil tips or something mm, like that. Yes. that sense, like there's so much that is in you, but as you're trying to figure out, what do I want to be? What does retirement look like? It, it just get it on paper, have a conversation, do some of those yes. things. Yes. And then one last thing before we move on is I remember, I, I, I don't remember if it was our last YouTube video where someone left this comment or is a totally different one, but someone left a really insightful comment on a video where they said, Hey, I retired in the first six months were so difficult. Like I had my structure, I did everything. And it was a really difficult transition. And then I don't remember what the change was. He said, like, I made one simple shift. I kept the structure, but like mm -hmm. I did this activity before that other activity. And, and just yeah. like this simple sense of like shifting the order in which I did things yeah. for whatever reason had a huge impact on him. So I think for people listening, don't, don't expect that like, Hey, okay, I got structure. I'm good. Uh -huh. to go. It's going to yeah. take some experimentation and some flexibility, but you can find what works for you if you're willing to commit to it. Yes. And on that note, there is one very specific thing that I highly recommend shifting if this is part of your habit, which is in the morning, you know, when your brain waves are going from theta to beta, it's very important not to get that intention hijacked by email devices, text, some, something that's coming from a screen, go straight to either journaling, meditation, or exercise, something like that, where you're intention is not hijacked. That mm -hmm. is definitely one of the first things that we talk about when we set up someone's morning routine. We go, I know you're used to opening your email first thing and answering all these things. Um, let's not do that until after you do X. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, how much, there's a stereotype of what retirement is supposed to look like. You might watch commercials and it's this couple walking on a dock on a bay or they're hiking or whatever there's smiles and there's leisure and it's all this how big of a role do you think the stereotype of retirement is supposed to look like plays in someone's actual quality of life when it comes to their retirement oh it's massive it is massive so subconsciously we're trained to think and consciously that retirement readiness equals financial readiness right am i going to outlive my money and it goes so far beyond that as we've been talking about and 
subconsciously, it's very dangerous to just fall into a life of sedentary <clears throat> activity, right? So it's very important to unlock the clarity and it's okay if an eternal vacation, a life of only leisure is not for you. You know, it's okay to say, I can't complain, but I'm also bored and I want to figure this out. You know, I'm not feeling at the top of my game anymore. I'm feeling irrelevant and I'm afraid to not be important or feel connected. You know, you have so much to unlock and this is the beginning of a growth journey. So the stereotype is, Retirement's time to settle down, live a life of leisure. I'm not disregarding the normal aging process, but I am saying that retirement is the beginning of a growth journey, a big growth journey. And there is so much for you to experience. So beyond disenchantment, there is reorientation and then there's stabilization, stages four and five. And I say beyond that, there's this huge growth journey. So once you get into this system of wiring your brain to look for things that are fueling your passion and your purpose, and you have structure and you have the discipline and you're taking care that way you're taking care of all your responsibilities and everything and you're financially sound and you have you know these great relationships like you can soar there's so much for you to do and it is amazing to see what people do once they rewire their retirement um and that's my passion is to you know fuel that movement of people who are soaring to greater and greater heights and redefining aging and redefining retirement and they're inspiring others around them. And so there's this big ripple effect. Yeah. I, I think there's important to frame it as a growth process. Like you're saying of that stereotype makes it seem like, okay, you have enough money and then life is just easy. But it's like, when is, when is any type of growth ever been easy? Never. You're studying to get into the right college, working hard to get good grades and get that first job. Like the struggle of the first couple of years in that job, trying to figure out the working world, trying to figure out how to be a, a good spouse, a good parent, a good, that's never been like, easy. Has never been part of your journey to get to where you are yet. Somehow we think that, okay, we're going to go from working, working, working to become who we become just to naturally falling into this retirement that's freeing and fulfilling and purposeful it's going to take just as much work as it was as it did to be the student you wanted to be or to be the worker you wanted to be or to be the parent you wanted to be or the, whatever it is that every single thing took work and so i think that stereotype of okay you're there you have enough money everything is good it does subconsciously impact our perception of what retirement's going to look like or supposed to look like but nothing nothing good it ever comes just super easy sometimes like it's going to take some work um and it's rewarding work but it's not just happening by default if you're not creating that structure 100 yep then if you maybe as we start to wrap up as you, if you had one piece of advice to give people as they find clarity in their dream life beyond finances what would that piece of advice be to go inward for the answers and to not compare to what other people are doing that's a dangerous trap and you're going to start self-doubting yourself you're, you're going to self-doubt and then you're going to start judging the thoughts that come out of your brain and so without judgment be very very consistent in your finding clarity process so you can utilize my program my tools my workbooks whatever but if you want to diy i highly recommend you be consistent so day after day after day after day just 20 minutes journaling prompting yourself following those energizing breadcrumbs and to find the clarity from within because it's going to be so unique to you, so different. And the format that's going to take place, let's say on your purpose and your passion in the future is going to look so different from what you can anticipate or predict right now, because you're really unlocking so much richness from your subconscious. It's very much a brain hack. Yeah. So consistency is going to build that much needed momentum. Love it. Awesome. Well, Sin, this has been super helpful. I know that you've got a website, you've got a YouTube channel. There's all kinds of cool stuff that you're doing. Where can people find you or find more about what you're doing? So secondwindmovement.com. You'll find everything there. Yep. Awesome. Well, Sin, thank you very much. It's been very insightful. I think that, that my takeaway is retirement doesn't have to be boring or stereotypical or the beginning of the end. Retirement can really be amazing as you start to focus on how can you continue to grow and develop relationships and give back. It can be truly one of the absolute best seasons of your life, but that doesn't happen by accident. The same way growing a portfolio for retirement doesn't happen by 
accident. The same way your other financial planning doesn't happen by accident. It does take some some work and some effort, but the the results are very much worth it. Yeah. The invisible stuff counts too. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for being here, Sen. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much. Once again, I'm James Knoll, founder of Root Financial. And if you're interested in seeing how we help our clients at Root Financial get the most out of life with their money, be sure to visit us at www.rootfinancialpartners.com.